Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. And special thanks to Mark Scott for sharing this. As you can see, the title of this video is Revival Mantle Transferred from Pastor Che Ann. And both of these guys are prominent figures in the New Apostolic Reformation. You can check out other videos on the Jeremy Nelson playlist, as well as the Che Ann playlist, here on Revealing Truth. But today we'll look at this biblically and also explain what a mantle actually is. So he starts off with this. But but what I wanted to do was just uh, the word the Lord gave me was uh, Malachi chapter 4, 5, and 6, that he's going to send the prophet Elijah, and he's going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the hearts of the children to the fathers. And I feel that's what's happening. And he goes on to explain about Elijah and revival, which leads to this. His main assignment was to give a double portion of anointing to Elijah. It's always about the next generation and pouring yourself to the next generation. So... So I feel what we experienced at Mod three and a half years from 94 to 97, 98 of having nightly meetings. And again, it was extraordinary. Some of you weren't even born. Some of you were so young, you know, you weren't even born in 1994 or you were 10 years old, whatever. Uh, but, but we're seeing another move of the Holy Spirit taking place. And I felt I need to do something prophetic. I remember at the prophetic conference, I was wearing my jacket and Jeremy took it. Uh, and he wore it. He said, I like this jacket. I claim this mantle. Then I realized I have my jacket with me just now. So I'm going to give you this. And I'm going to put this on you as, as a prophetic act. As a prophetic act. Now, there's still more to this clip. But first, let's look at what a mantle is. And of course, it's a prophetic act because Che Ann is not only a prophet, but an apostle, as Peter Wagner declared in the commissioning of Todd Bentley. This is one of the responsibilities of, of apostles, such as those whom you see on the platform. And Che Ann was the one who did the official commissioning of the granny kicking heretic Todd Bentley. Sorry, just being honest. And remember, Peter Wagner says there's over 500 recognized apostles. And currently I preside over the International Coalition of Apostles, which brings together over 500 recognized apostles. Who recognized them as apostles? Themselves, not God. But one form of a mantle is a cloak or covering like an animal skin that people like Elijah wore as a sign of their calling from God. The prophet's mantle was an indication of his authority and responsibility as God's chosen spokesperson. And it was God who chose Elisha to succeed Elijah in his prophetic ministry, as we see in 1 Kings 19. But we know this isn't just a symbol to these people. It's a special anointing. And when we see people like Ben Lim and Benny Hinn grave soap for Catherine Coleman's mantle, that's witchcraft. And others ask God for dead man William Branham's mantle. I know it's never happened. But I know that it must before the end. There must be, not just individuals. I'm thankful. We have individuals that are rising up with such anointing, such strength. We have people scattered all over the planet right now that are just making a mess of things in all the right ways. We're so encouraged. But what I'm believing for is a generation. A generation will rise up with a corporate faith, a corporate anointing to press into realms because it's my conviction that as much as God put on a William Branham or a Catherine Kuhlman or a Wigglesworth, he'll put far greater anointing on a company of people than he ever would on an individual. And to do that, there must be that corporate sense of we have to deal with the issue of obeying the rules of this kingdom to tap into the resources of this kingdom. John G. Lake in Healing and Miracles, it's because of the divine power of the Holy Ghost and his grip on dominion and his grip, and I'm not just talking about him, I'm talking about many men and women in the past. William Branham had a gift of a word of knowledge that was so scary, it was so scary he would know exactly who the person was in the back of the crowd, what city they came from, what car they drove, what their neighbor's house looked like. This is crazy and people were like, oh, and it gripped men's hearts. It gripped women's hearts with such a ferociousness that there was no way to escape the love of God. Several years ago, I was laying on the floor. Um, I think it may have been in a prayer chapel, but and it's asking God if I could have the uh, mantle of William Branham. 
I just got done. In fact, Bill has a, a series of uh, uh, video, old videos of William Branham, and I just watched one of them where he called out about 40 people in a row, and he said, your, your name is like John, and your doctor's name is Dr. You know, Henry, and you got uh, cancer of whatever, and, and uh, your sister Mary told you to come here, and did that to, with about 30 or 40 people on this video. So I got done watching that video. I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't even have a prophetic gift. And so I was in the prayer chapel, and I laying on the floor, and I said, God, would you give me the mantle of William Branham? And he said, well, how could I do that? If I did that, it would, it would destroy you. So, and I was laying there. It was like the Lord asked, how could I do that? I, so then I said, I waited about a few minutes, and I was thinking about it. I said, well, you could put the same mantle on a whole generation, then we wouldn't stand out from one another. He said, all right, I'll do that. <laughs> Not awesome. That's what the Lord wants to do. This is just wrong asking for a special anointing from a deceased false teacher. Truth is that we only read about this mantle in 1 Kings, and it was ordained by God. So none of these people should be taking this mantle matter into their own hands. But let's get back to Cheyenne and Jeremy. Now, <laughs> I know it doesn't fit you. I'm a little bit... A little bit bigger, but you could have it altered. <laughs> but the point is, is that I really feel this is a prophetic act that what we experienced at Mod in the early years of 94, because we didn't see the full-blown revival with the capital R. We didn't see the harvest come in. But I believe that we're going to see the harvest come in with this next wave and extraordinary signs and wonders. So This whole revival movement that's now attached to the Seven Mountain Mandate has been going on for decades, but never actually happens. Even though we hear from different people every year that this is the year of revival. Catherine Coleman said this, Benny Hinn has said this, and that looks more like a funeral than a revival. Bill Johnson is always talking about this, as is Chris Vallotton, and so are so many others in the new apostolic movement. There's nothing wrong with revival, so yes, preach the gospel to everyone everywhere and let's see people saved by Jesus. But the Bible speaks of a great falling away or apostasy in the end times, not a great revival. So when we hear from all these self-appointed apostles and prophets about God telling them about revival, we should be very cautious and test the spirits as 1 John says. And after seeing so much bad fruit from people like Che Ann and Jeremy, I think it's safe to say that their revival mantle transfer is just another show. But hey, biblically, what do you think about this? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below, and until next time, take care and God bless.